Dental caries, that is tooth decay, is considered uh, the most prevalent infectious disease in the world as it affects over 80% of the human population. Uh, when in the 1920s, Streptococcus mutans was isolated from a caries lesion, it was considered to be the etiological agent of uh, tooth decay. However, recent studies, uh, not only based on culture, but also on DNA and mainly RNA work, has shown that there, there are other uh, species of bacteria, even candida, that can be involved in the disease. When we look at the DNA and RNA data of whole microbial communities, that is metagenomics and metatarchitomics uh, data, we actually see that the proportion of Streptococcus mutants is very low, and it accounts for less than 1% of the total community. We have uh, reviewed all the work uh, by which RNA from the dental plaque and especially from inside uh, caries lesions was isolated, then the RNA is transcribed into cDNA and that is uh, sequenced. By, by sequencing this cDNA, uh, different researchers have been able to look at the active composition of uh, microbial communities within the, those caries lesions and they have actually found a very complex community, which is found by tens, even hundreds of bacterial species. When we look at uh, electron microscopy, for example, uh, from caries lesions, both enamel and dentin, we actually see a very uh, diverse uh, number of species, as we can see in these images. One of the surprises in these RNA-based metatranscriptomic studies has been to identify a completely different set of bacterial species in enamel and dentin cavities. In this image, for example, we can see uh, the bacterial composition, the active bacterial composition in an enamel white spot caries lesion, as well as in the dentin cavity, hidden dentin cavity from the same tooth. In that sense, we can conclude that dental caries is a tissue dependent process. When we look uh, at the active bacterial composition per individual tooth, we see that it is entirely different uh, between caries lesions. In some of them, for example, uh, the community is dominated entirely by lactobacillus. In other cases, uh, this genus is completely absent and there is a different set of organisms, as we can see in this image. Therefore, we conclude that caries is a polymicrobial pathology caused by different bacterial consortia. One of the surprises that we have seen when we review the literature in both uh, dental caries and periodontal disease is that the um, oral pathogens are also found in healthy individuals, although they are at lower levels. Therefore, we believe that the correct term to refer to this bacteria is not pathogens, but pathobionts, that is, commensal species which are present under healthy conditions, but when there is a change in the environment, then they increase in proportion and they are able to generate the disease. In addition, and also related to that, we don't consider uh, dental caries to be an infectious disease. Uh, but rather we consider it to be a dysbiosis, that is a change in the ecological balance of the bacterial species present in the sample. Therefore, our definition of dental caries would be a dysbiotic polymicrobial disease caused by pathobionts. There are several practical implications of this work. One of them relates to the development of an anti-caries vaccine. There has been both active and passive immunization strategies against dental caries, but they have been mainly focused on specific um, surface antigens of Streptococcus mutants. But as we show in this manuscript, this is just a very small proportion of the total active bacteria involved in the disease, and therefore we believe that an anti caries vaccine will not be efficient. Therefore, we believe we need to change our mind frame about oral diseases in general and about dental caries in particular because if it is not an infectious disease 
then we cannot treat it as an infectious disease. We believe that antimicrobial strategies will not be very efficient and we have to focus on different kinds of strategies, for example probiotics or prebiotics, to modify the environment and to restore the balance. To end that dysbiosis, restoring the ecological balance of the microbial community, leading to a healthy condition.